I, I think I think they were seventy four, and after after redistricting, and I think that we can uh, uh, any any gains we have will be considered would be a victory for us. I think we can pick off three to six people within reason, and, and maybe if, if things kind of go our way nationally a little better, uh, uh, we might even get get a little higher than that. But so much so much today depends on the uh, the national market. You know, they used to say all politics are local. That's not the case anymore. We run a 24-hour news cycle, and people pay more attention to Fox, CNN, MS, NBC than they do their local people press anymore. Are, are, are you, does the national, you brought up the national issue, does having Obama, you know, having it be a presidential election here in Tennessee, does that hurt down ballot? Well, you know, he's, but he's coming along. Yeah, it does. It does. It does to a certain degree. But uh, and, and when he won, when, when he got elected in 2008, he was at 35%. When we got beat real bad in 2010, he was at 31% popularity. He's at 43 today, so that's a big. That's a big. You know, it's not going to be as bad as it was. He, he's going to lose some areas, some areas of the states. He, he's going to get clobbered. He's showing some surprising strength in Middle Tennessee, especially in Middle Tennessee. So, so I think uh, you know, the, those numbers are better than what they were. Um, the other question I have uh, is uh, what we talked about uh, a little earlier. I, as a as a tactician, this is a little more strategy uh, based question. I'd say you after election day. After everyone's sworn in, in in January, and you're facing a super majority, um, what's what are the tactics there? How do you stay relevant as a party in a in that world? Well, when it was reversed a few years back, they they were they stayed relevant. So I mean, I guess we do the same thing. I think I think the advantage that we have though, we have more experienced people. We know how to we know how to govern. They do not have how, how to govern. They they've actually still playing partisan politics when they're supposed to be governing. When you're when you're in control, you have got to make hard decisions that may not always, you know, gee haul with your rank and file members out there. You have to do what's best for all the citizens of Tennessee. They haven't transitioned into that yet, uh, but uh, we understand that game. We understand the process that needs to be involved to make Tennessee work for everybody. Our people will have thirty, you know, thirty two, thirty three people back, uh, maybe a little higher, hopefully a little higher. Uh, there'll be. Uh, uh, but that's what we'll depend on, to, uh, our unity. And we'll have uh, most of our people you know, will be solid and behind each other where they are somewhat separated. They've got uh, the traditional Lamar Alexanders, uh, Howard Baker, Beth Harwell, Bill Haslam type Republicans. Uh, then they've got the very extremist Republicans out there that seem to be pushing the wagon right now and, and, and trying to lead them in, in, a, in a direction that's to the extreme right. I think that benefits us in the long term politically. But I say I think it also creates a split among them, and they they don't need Democrats. So my thirty some odd Democratic votes is pretty pretty large block when it comes.